Hey guys, welcome to Nyonya Cooking. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a noodle dish. There are many different types of noodle dishes in Malaysia. Laksa is the favorite and is also very popular. But there's also another noodle dish which is also popular, spicy and one of my favorite. There are many variations of it but today we are going to attempt a simple one. And this is how to prepare mee siam goreng or as I call it, spicy fried rice vermicelli. This is very simple to prepare and you can make it every day. Um, I usually buy it from the ladies who sell them at the roadside. You know, if you go to Malaysia, there are many stores by the roadside and they will offer kueh, uh, rice, or like nasi lemak and also mee siam goreng. Because it's so simple, it's uh, very light. I love it with coffee or tea like teh tarik. And if you know what I mean, you cannot wait for the list of ingredients to prepare it yourself at home. Now, let's take a look at them. We need some dried chilies, dried shrimps, shallots, garlic, and also fermented beans, also known as tauchu. All these ingredients would then contribute to making the rempah or the chili paste. Now, this chili paste would help to spice up the noodles, of course, and also to add flavor to the noodles. Now, as we move on, we will need some fresh prawns, Chinese chives, tofu, and also fish ball. Now you'll notice that I use Chinese chives instead of spring onions. Of course, you can also use spring onions or scallions. That's not an issue. And also I use uh, tofu puffs instead of this fried tofu, uh, which is also known as tau kwa. Either way, you can use. Uh, I do not have tau kwa today. Um, so we are using tofu puffs. For noodles, we need rice vermicelli. And to add some more flavor to the noodles, we have a bit of ketchup, salt, sugar. Ketchup is widely used in Asian dishes. I know uh, many of you commented ketchup is meant for burgers, you know, I don't use it in my Asian dishes. But my mom uses a lot of it and also my grandma. Uh, Mi Siam also uses fresh tomatoes if you like. But uh, in this case, I use uh, ketchup. So to garnish, you need fresh ingredients. And here we have some scallions, chilies, an omelette cut into strips, and also some lemon cuts. As you know, I live in Germany, calamansi would be the best for mee siam, but it's not widely available. You can also substitute with lime. I do not have lime. Again, substitute works best if you are living abroad. We have all the ingredients. Now let's prepare rempah. So in goes the dried chilies, dried shrimps. As for the dried shrimps, you need to rinse them under cold water. Just a quick rinse will do. Then garlic shallots I'm halfway through blending and you notice that there are still big chunks and I want it to be smoother so so with the help of a bit of water this is what we're going to do and using a spoon I'm just going to scoop the sides down and then we will begin blending again Rumpa is done, so we are going to scoop this out. And meanwhile, I have my pan heating up. Later, we'll add some oil. And then we are going to saute this rumpa. So this is how it looks like. You still see a bit of chunks of chilies, which is totally fine because I want it to be uh, noticeable. But do not have really big chunks like what we had earlier. Add a bit of oil. And once you feel the heat, you can put the rampa into the pan. We're going to saute this until the color changes, uh, it gets into a deeper red. And as usual with rampa, the oil needs to separate from the chili paste. So give it a bit of time. Oil shouldn't be too hot or else you will burn the rampa. Or else it's going to be really tough. It's not going to darken and you will not get the flavors from the chilies. Once you can smell the aroma and the fragrance from the rempa, then you know that it is an indication it is almost ready. So now I will add tauchu. You can add the whole beans, but I like to use a little fork and lightly press so that we get a bit of 
Chow Chu Paste. This is a preference thing, it's optional. Now when making mee siam, I think that the fermented beans would really really add these flavors and if you do not have fermented beans or teochew then it wouldn't really be mee siam goreng so if you want to have uh, mee siam goreng make sure you get fermented beans so take for about a minute or so and then we will add uh, shrimps fish balls here i've cut them into little slices tofu now at this point of time, I would want to add a bit of water just to have some gravy. Once it starts boiling, we will add rice vermicelli noodles into the pan. Also, the chives. Now, stirring noodles can be quite tough, especially when it's a pan and it's not a wok. Of course, you can use a wok, which is very much simpler. But I like to use uh, my stainless steel pan with some chopsticks and very lightly mix this up. Not forgetting ketchup. Now keep mixing until the gravy is almost gone and at this point of time switch the stove uh, off and always taste, right? Mm. I love the saltiness and then the spiciness takes in. Awesome. But it does lack some sweetness so a bit of sugar and if you find that it's not salty enough for you, you can always add um, salt but I think it's just fine for me sometimes when I make a mee siam I also like to add a bit of tamarind juice so I add maybe one spoonful or one teaspoon of um, tamarind puree I add a bit of water and then I'll add to the rumpa so that will also add some uh, sourness to this dish and it can also be really delicious again always taste Mm, nice. I think a bit more sugar would not hurt. So as you see, the gravy has dried and the noodles also is now incorporated with all the ingredients. And that's why chopsticks are really really useful when it comes to cooking noodles. Because you can always pick them up and then mix with the ingredients. Now this can be really really fast, do not let the ingredients scare you because if you have quite an extensive um, kitchen or Asian pantry, you would have all these ingredients at home. Chinese chives can be substituted with uh, scallions so that's not an issue. Now I'm going to use this very special plate, if you've seen my Instagram stories you would know that I made this plate, I painted it, it looks really really pretty right? What do you think? And it's my first time using this plate as well. So this dish is really special. Now before we started this video, we also made some uh, behind the scenes video on Patreon. So if you want to check us out on Patreon, this is a shameless plug, but it's patreon.com slash cooking and that's where you can see behind the scenes how my camera is like, um, how it's fixed. We have two cameras by the way. You know, this also reminds me of school parties because back then in school sometimes, uh, you know, we get food catered and me siam goreng will always be there. It's very spicy, but it's just so, so, so delicious. Look at this plate of beautiful rice vermicelli noodles. So, so delicious. I cannot wait to finish this. But as I mentioned, we need to garnish it especially if you have guests and of course make this for parties you know so that people get a bit of spiciness and a bit of punch in their food <laughs> 
some scallions all around. And since it's slightly orangey, reddish, we are going to add some yellow to the dish. And this is um, omelette cut into strips. But of course, the last touch will be adding some calamansi, or in my case, will be lemon cuts. So I'm just going to put it at the side. Now, honestly, guys, this looks like a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mess. It looks delicious, fast, simple, and I know that you can prepare this uh, after work, for example. You can always prepare the paste in at once, freeze them, and then use them whenever you want. But before I finish this video, of course, we will need to taste it. A bit of noodles. Really, really delicious. Now, before I try it, I just want to tell you that you can take a photo of the recipes that you have tried, especially this dish because it's just so simple. And join the community by uploading your photo on the website. So, now without further ado... Mm. So, so, so delicious. I don't know how to tell you, but this brings back a lot of memories. I eat this almost all the time because we have this sometimes for breakfast. Um, like I said, at the roadside by this auntie selling food in school, uh, night markets. It brings a lot of memories. It's so simple. And also sometimes when we visit friends' home, if they have uh, celebrations, you always have me going see them. It's so simple. Now, if you love this recipe, give it a thumbs up and do not forget, you can be a part of our effort to spread the love of food, especially Malaysian food, on Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash cooking. Go check that out and check out the behind the scenes video. Until then, I hope to see you in other videos and drop me your comments in the comment section to let me know what you think. Till then, I wish you happy cooking!